the countries with the most number of COVID-19 cases, it kind of sounds like we're talking about the Olympic Games. On this week's episode of Headlines, we'll be looking at COVID-19 updates, protests in the USA, Shinzo Abe's resignation in Japan, Chadwick Boseman, the SAT, and some interesting cricket news. Welcome to Headlines. First, some COVID-19 updates. Hong Kong researchers have made an interesting but worrying discovery when they announced last week the first ever genetically verified case of someone who's been reinfected with the coronavirus. This means that the widespread belief that you're immune to the disease once you've had it once isn't true. The US saw a reinfection case in the state of Nevada and India saw a couple as well. The WHO is calling for more investigations into this. Meanwhile, in Hong Kong, more than half a million people signed up for the government's free mass COVID-19 testing scheme within the first 11 hours of it being open for registration. Testing kicked off on September 1st, despite criticism that it was not effective and fears that biodata could be misused for surveillance. Lots of countries are seeing a resurgence of COVID-19. Spain, for example, is possibly witnessing a second wave of the virus. In terms of global COVID-19 tallies, we have the US in the lead, with Brazil, India, Russia and Peru following closely behind. Last week in Kenosha, Wisconsin, an African-American man named Jacob Blake was shot seven times in the back by a police officer as he entered his car in which three of his children were seated. Blake was reportedly unarmed, although this hasn't been confirmed yet. Reports say that the police were responding to a domestic incident when they tried to arrest Blake. He resisted and fought with the officers and, even after being tasered, headed back to the car as the officers tried to stop him. According to passerbys who witnessed the incident, however, Jacob Blake did not show any intention to harm the officer who shot him. Blake is currently recovering after multiple surgeries and he's paralyzed from the waist down as a result of the shooting. The shooting has sparked unrest in Kenosha. On the 28th of August, a 17-year-old named Kyle Rittenhouse, armed with an assault rifle, scuffled with protesters and then opened fire, killing two. Although they were present, police did not detain Rittenhouse. Instead, viral images have shown the police giving Rittenhouse water. These pictures were met with anger, and many condemned both Rittenhouse and the police for their actions. Shinzo Abe, the Prime Minister of Japan, has resigned. Abe has said that he did not want his illness, ulcerative colitis, to get in the way of decision-making and apologize to the Japanese people for failing to complete his time in office. Abe will hold his post until a new PM is elected. Potential candidates are Deputy Prime Minister Taro Aso, Chief Cabinet Secretary Yoshihide Suga, and LDP Policy Chief Fumio Kishida, who is rumored to be Mr. Abe's choice. Abe's Liberal Democratic Party will vote on their choice on September 14th. Abe is Japan's longest-serving prime minister, more of a serial PM, if you like, serving four terms. At the end of the day, I guess you could say that Shinzo was Abe. The UN Security Council blocked America's effort to restore sanctions on Iran after failing to extend an embargo on the country. The president of the council has said that many members disagreed with America's position. According to several nations, the U.S. has no right to interfere in Iran's affairs as the Trump administration pulled the U.S. out of the Iran nuclear deal two years ago. Meanwhile, Iran agreed to grant inspectors from the International Atomic Energy Agency access to two nuclear sites after a months-long standoff. In sad news, Chadwick Boseman, the star whom we all know as the Black Panther in the Avengers series, passed away on the 20th of August due to colon cancer. Bozeman, who also played Thurgood Marshall in the film Marshall and James Brown in the film Get On Up, both critically acclaimed movies, was diagnosed with cancer in 2016 and kept his diagnosis secret from the public. Bozeman's final tweet has amassed more than 7 million likes, becoming the most liked tweet on Twitter, overtaking one from Barack Obama, which has just over 4 million likes. Wakanda forever. August 29th, 2020 was the day 400,000 students were supposed to take the standardized admissions test, or the SAT, the entrance exam for American colleges. But due to COVID-19, only around half were able to take it as test centers closed. For many students, this was the second cancellation of their SAT this year. 
College Board, the company that runs the tests, has offered refunds and testing dates in September, October and December for students who had their exams cancelled. In response to this continuous cancellation of the SAT, many universities, including some of the Ivy League schools such as Harvard, Yale and Columbia, have adopted test optional policies for 2020-2021, meaning that students do not have to submit their scores and they won't be disadvantaged in the admissions process. At least, that's what the universities say. Finally, in the world of cricket, James Anderson, a fast bowler for the English cricket team, got into the record books last week when England faced off against Pakistan. Anderson reached the milestone 600 wickets last Tuesday after a 17-year career for England in which he bowled over 33,000 balls and ran more than 600 kilometers. This feat meant that Anderson is now fourth in the list of all-time high test wicket-takers behind cricket legends Murali Tharan, who leads with 800 wickets, Vaughan and Kumble. And he's the only one still playing. According to The Economist, who aren't really known for their sporting articles, the cricketer at the age of 38 is being preserved and rationed by English cricket authorities with the prudence of a maroon sailor supplied with a single tin of bully beef. Wow, that had so many things to unpack. Respect. On that note, those are your headlines for this week. I'll see you next time on Headlines.